2013 here in the U.S. We're celebrating 20 years of Nile as well with the one and only Carl Sanders. How are you doing today, Carl? Doing great. How about you? Good. I am doing amazing. I love this guitar. Well, thank you. The second thing I noticed after I saw you today, can you play a little something for us? Like, what are you warming up with? What is, what's your favorite thing to warm up with? Oh, dumb stuff, really. <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of fundamentals. <laughs> stuff, you know, arpeggios, scales. So it's like John Petrucci fundamentals. <laughs> well, yeah, his, uh, actually, his video is actually full of great fundamentals. Yeah. I recommend it to uh, any aspiring guitarist. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so tell me, I mean, 20 years as a band is incredible. I mean, once you pass that 10 year mark, you really start to go through, you've already been through lots of trials, but 20 years is a really big deal. <laughs> What's one of the first things that you reflect on in in 20 years of being in a heavy metal band? Uh, it's usually 20 years? Oh my fucking god, where did the time go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and then I realized, well, I spent it doing what I love, playing metal. Absolutely. So I guess that's where it went. <laughs> now let's talk about um, one thing I find really interesting is you were on the 70,000 tons of metal tour. How was that? Was that just, how, I mean, how was it different from your other concert experiences? Well, uh, it is different somehow. Um, I think as a metal fan, you know, I got to see a lot of my favorite bands and hang out with, you know, all my tour friends. And it seems like the fans that were there were relaxed and chilled out. And it, they were a lot of fun to be around. It was. The one part I was a little bit hesitant about, because um, uh, in the normal concert environment, fans turn into like this other creature. Like they, they um, sometimes forget that they're people and they act like lunatics. And uh, it's not as much fun to be around as it could be. Um, but I found on the this cruise, the 70,000 ton cruise, 70,000 ton cruise, <laughs> wow, that's a tongue twister. It's a, um, it's a mouthful. <laughs> the fans were incredibly chilled out and relaxed and were a lot of fun to be around and, and hang out and talk and drink beers with and just be really casual. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely, but would you get like bombarded at the bars like someone was sitting next to you like, hey no. man, Unas? Love Slayer, the guys, man. Yeah, it, it was wonderful. <laughs> I, people would still come up every now and then, but they would act like normal human beings instead of like you know. It, it shows for some reason there's some chemistry in the air that makes people lose their minds and act like animals. <laughs> I would totally agree with that. People just get rabid yeah. at concerts, yeah. but sometimes that contributes to the energy, you know. You know, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Yeah. Absolutely. It's awesome. I love metal. So let's talk about this tour here. You guys are playing, uh, advertised, you're playing two entire sets of songs spanning your entire career. How are you preparing stamina-wise and instrument-wise? I mean, first of all, the stamina of playing two sets, that's going to take a lot of endurance. Yeah. And then with your instruments, I mean, I can see some technical difficulties and things. So how are you preparing for all this? Well, um... Many people um, radically underestimate how taxing it is to play this kind of extreme death metal. Mm -hmm. um, it's very hard on, on the muscles, the joints, the wrists, mm -hmm. uh, especially poor George. Um, two hours of, of that kind of drumming is just a feel for the guy. He's, yeah. he's got oh. a really tough job. Um, 
But we started, um, even before rehearsals started, all just buckling down and spending hours and hours every day um, practicing. Um, uh, we had rehearsal uh, files where, like, George would have a click and then the rest of us playing, and then we would practice to the click and him playing. And so even before we started official rehearsal rehearsals, we were still, you know, actively playing the set every day. Then once George flew to America, um, we did six days of double rehearsals. That would be two sets of two sets. Oh man! Um, so, and it was uh, at first it was really really hard, and it's still pretty taxing. We're freaking exhausted. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit of a biting off more than one can chew, but you have to do it. I mean, we're out here. We can't like all of a sudden take fans well we're getting winded about you know halfway <laughs> through that second set so i'm sorry we're not going to play unis no we can't do that yeah so absolutely we're just toughing it out we're uh we're doing what we can we uh go to sleep every night like totally dead so as soon as our head hits the pillow we're out yeah i can't imagine i really can't so and another thing that i found really really interesting about this tour is the fact that it's you and local bands no, I, fought, I find this extremely interesting, and, and for us who like to support, we like to support the underground here in SD as well. But and I know the promoters pick these, but how do you get to do you get to interact with these bands? Do they hand you demos? What's your level of interaction? It's a casual interaction. Um, we do like load in sound check, and they're here, they're doing load in and sound check. So you know we see them all night. Uh, we hear them. You can't not hear them if you're in the yeah. building and there's a death metal band playing. You hear them. Um, so a lot of the bands have been really nice um, and have gone out of their way to be uh, hospitable towards us. Variety of genres or is it all the promoters trying to make it fit to, to the death metal genre? It's pretty much in there, although I have seen some fringe bands that were actually quite interesting. There was a, a jazz core kind of band in um, <laughs> Richmond. It was like wow. death core and jazz kind of mixed together. I thought they were <laughs> Breakdowns with saxophones. <laughs> well, I can only use their imagination for that. Yeah. Now, what intrigued you about having local metal instead of maybe bringing someone like Vader along, or even like you guys had um, a stint with Warbringer as well? Especially with Warbringer, you could bring in a totally illegal, bring in another genre of thrash metal who might not otherwise listen to Nile. So, what, what's the kind of pull and appeal of doing a local band instead of someone else maybe a little bit more recognizable? Well, we've noticed uh, over the years, um, us five, six years, that on these package tours, uh, none of the local bands were really getting their chance to play. And, mm -hmm. and I believe every band starts out as a local band. Mm -hmm. In fact, the next generation of metal bands are today's local bands. So if we're destroying the opportunities for younger bands to play, we're really just destroying the future of metal. Um, so I really didn't like what was happening in you know, that aspect of the metal scene. I think uh, the bands deserve their chance to play. I mean, that's where you learn your craft, where you get experience, where you learn how to write songs and bring them to people and make music that uh, people will enjoy. If you have no place to practice your craft, then where are you going to go? Um, so I, I think that was a real important thing that we, you know, as a band wanted to address was, you know, let's stop cutting out the local bands. Right. Um, there's great local bands in every city. Um, there's some not so great ones too, but I mean that's just the way it goes. The, mm -hmm. the way not so good ones become better ones is by playing and right. getting that experience. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And we, we really appreciate that one. So I, I really appreciate that, and I know everyone, everyone watching definitely appreciates it. So do those local bands, <laughs> the ones who are serious. Anyway. We've seen that too, um, all across the country. The bands who are serious and hardworking um, have that appreciative and hunger to come in and get up there and do their thing and kick ass. And I love it. It's it's fucking healthy. It's the way it should be. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about this new album. This new album at the Gate of Sethu was probably my favorite since Annihilation of the Wicked. It was just absolute brutality from beginning to end. 
What I'm fascinated by is this music video. You guys were <laughs> so hard. It was spine chilling. The first time I saw that, I was just like, oh my goodness, this is just, I mean, creatively, conceptually, it's beautiful. And it, it's really amazing. So tell me about the hard work that went into this. We spent 10 days in Greece, <laughs> which is, that must be amazing. But tell me a little bit about the work that went into this. Well, um, only really for us, one of the 10 days was a lot of hard work. Uh, the rest of that was spent waiting on our chance to do our part in the shoot. The kudos got to go to John uh, Savanis, who, who did all this amazing hard work to make this video happen, from collecting all the actors and getting the scenes and the props, uh, the special effects, all the fire that went into this. Yeah, um, all the flaming holy pig's shit. heads and bonfires. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, holy shit. I mean, they, he really, you know, he's the one that deserves, you know, a lot of praise for this video because he worked his ass off. Um, now, Nuclear Blast has a video and the, uh, of the making of, and George was talking about the fire department that was, <laughs> that was standing by. What kind of dangers or, or did anything go wrong during that during Actually, that Actually, yeah, uh, two of the crew members caught themselves on fire. Um, <gasps> oh no! For each video shoot, for each take, and we did takes, you know, lasting from you know the afternoon well into like three or four, five in the morning. Um, for each flaming shot that they had to do, they would have to relight the fires. Okay. Relight. Flyers. And it was wow. already. Yeah. I said flyers, like the flyers. We're having fun. So they would use this accelerant. It's a liquid accelerant okay. that instantly just goes, you know, it's like way more potent than gasoline as far as flammability. So it's extremely flammable. Well, these guys had, do this all the time. That's their gig. So they were, you know, kind of haphazard and careless, and you know, a, a very cavalier Greek attitude about it. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. And they'd have it all over themselves and just not care. They just, you know, like the thing, jump out of the way, and there you go. Well, uh, one of the guys uh, lit himself on fire. <laughs> Right, and, and it, it jumped from his shoe up to his pants, and of course, because he's got the accelerant all over himself, it would just jump. But he was, apparently had done this so many times, that he was able to like do this crazy voodoo dance where he just like, <laughs> just went, did this crazy dance and, you know, extinguished the flames. Um, which I thought that was just, you know, mind boggling. Well, the next guy that lit himself on fire, wasn't as good a dancer. Oh my God. Yeah, he got burned. He had to be taken to the hospital. The nutty thing was the uh, the Greek fire department that was there. Um, they had a truck with you know water and you know, hoses and whole nine yards. Um, they told us that they were there to protect the Greek countryside, so that if the mountain caught on fire, they put that out. But as far as us band guys went, we were on our own. <laughs> oh no! And yeah, I mean, they really meant it because they didn't help any of these guys that caught themselves on fire. Oh my goodness, that doesn't seem safe. <laughs> I mean, you could have used the shot for the music video for the guy doing the rude dance. Well, I think you could have exported that in your video. Cool. <laughs> uh, it, it reminded me a little bit about uh, when the video was being made for you. Pyrus contained the spell. Uh -huh. um, the director, uh, Punchy, was also the cameraman. Uh, and he was going to get the shots of these crocodiles. So he actually went into the crocodile pen to get the shot. But there were multiple crocodiles in there. So while he was like focused in on the main one, there were three others that were slowly and subtly like stalking. <laughs> And like, uh, there was a moment of realization, of course, when he realized, hey, wow, I'm being stalked by huge <laughs> crocodiles. Maybe I should pan back. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness. These guys are, they're really dedicated to what they do. You know, <laughs> set themselves on fire, uh, eaten by crocodiles. Wow, you could wow. make song titles out of that. Manager eating by crocodiles. <laughs> That's so great. And uh, my last question for you, 
Uh, I love seeing your name pop up on some of my favorite metal artists. Like you've been on XDO's Romulus album, you've been souls on that. You did Morbid Angel Heretic, and my favorite band of all time, you're on Behemoth Demigod. My question for you is if you were to have a guest musician or a guest band kind of collaborate with you on a song, who would you like to work with? Wow. Um, Immolation jumps to mind. Um, Chris Hume. Oh, I'm guessing Chris Hume. Such a killer album. Aren't they you could do like a compilation, that would be so cool. It would be a lot of fun. I'll put that yeah. in the suggestion box. All right, yeah. <laughs> Well, Carl, thank you so much for joining us here on SDMetal.com. Really looking forward to going hard in the pit today. Can't Fuck wait. Yeah. We've been watching SDMetal.com.